Well, hello, welcome, internet friends near and far to another episode of Parks and Conversation. This is a podcast where we watch an episode of Parks and Rec, and then we talk about it and other things. If you've been listening for the uh, the past year that we've been releasing these uh, podcast episodes, you know that the the, the TV show is uh, is really just a reason for Jeremy and I to talk is what it comes across. Because my name is Jason. I'm joined all the way across town this time by my friend Jeremy. Say hello, Jeremy. Hey, how's it going? It is going so well. It is a uh, you know typical June Friday in the Pacific Northwest as we're recording this. So that means it's cold and cloudy. So, Perfect. yeah, I cannot complain too much because, you know, if you do, they, uh, they say, then why don't you move? And you're like, well, where would I go? And you're like, anywhere where there's no rain or clouds. And then you're like, but, and then there's no winning. So you yeah, just kind of. That, that is just hot. Yeah. So you just kind of like, you know, bad mouth your feelings about the weather and how like cloudy it is all the time, just really passive aggressively at, at who, who, who can do anything about it? Everybody around you. You just make sure everybody feels it, you know, but you just want to make sure you just kind of complain about it subtly throughout your life. Just really Mm -hmm. push it down, just shove it down deep. Don't confront it and see if somebody forces you into punching him in the nose or something. I don't know, man. There's so many things we can learn from this. Yeah. So it's almost like, it's almost like we're Ben hmm. in a world that we have no control over. And uh, we can we can just ignore it. We can be sarcastic and passive aggressive about it. Or we can elbow the weather in the face. Yeah, the world is the world Andy then. Like, you, who knows what it's going to do next? Well, all, think- we know, all we know is we're just in a headlock. We're just along for the ride. I think the world is Andy and, and April in this situation. Because there are things in the world that are good and wonderful. And then there are blood orphans. <laughs> Which I don't know what to do about that. So, yeah. So I think it's a combination. And so, you know, we're trying to figure our figure our lives out in the greater scheme of things. And sometimes things just happen to us while we're trying to work quietly in our room. Uh, and Oren keeps trying to break in, you know, there's all kinds of things that, you know, are outside of our control and we just have to be alert. So maybe, maybe that's how we need to start. Like whether you live somewhere, it's hot, it's muggy or it's cold. If you complain about the, if you hear somebody else complain about the weather, you can always say, well, at least it's not blood orphans. (laughs) At least it's not blood orphans. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's a good, uh, good way to move forward. See what they do, you know, because it could be worse. How how bad could it be? Blood orphan. Oh, yeah, that is pretty bad. That would be terrible. So, uh, listener, in case you didn't know, uh, we're talking about uh, season four, episode five. It's titled The Meet and Greet. And the basic premise is uh, Leslie and her campaign is hosting an event for small business owners. And Tom's throwing a party for that event. And then uh, yeah. Andy and April are throwing a part, a Halloween party at their house and they didn't tell Ben. Right. Yeah. And then, and then okay. inside that party is, is a C plot. Inside that party is a C plot and a D plot. Yeah. Oh yeah. This had so many levels in that party that, uh, it, there's just a lot going on. And so I think if we, uh, jump to the party, let's talk about what's going on in the party. And then let's talk about Tom and Leslie. How's that sound? Sure. Sure. That sounds great. Okay. So that's our plan forward, uh, listener. So if you are, uh, you haven't watched this episode yet, then I would encourage you just to um, watch those episodes, that those parts of the episode in sequence. So you're going to have to do a lot of fast forwarding and pausing and stuff and really get a, get a feel for what's happening. Um, And then uh, come back and uh, tell us what you think. And if you do have thoughts on this episode or maybe, you know, masking your own feelings, um, then go to uh, parks and conversation at gmail.com. Send a letter, send an email, tell your friends, all that stuff. Podcast. Um, yeah, and if we so- somehow offended you, yeah, don't hold it in. You know, let us know. Let us know how we could be better. You know, you're invited. You're invited to this podcast. It's fine. But, you know, sometimes we're not always aware of everybody's, you know, wants and needs in the mm-hmm. podcast world. Yeah. Across sometimes- the world. Sometimes we're throwing a party without asking you about it. Yeah. So if you're like, hey, could you guys talk less about Dave Grohl? (laughs) 
okay, sorry. <laughs> Didn't know. <laughs> Dude, I literally I literally saw a, a gift today or GIF, whatever, however you want to say it, <clears throat> of where Dave Grohl or Nirvana was hosting uh SNL. It was like way back in the day. Oh yeah. And <clears throat> and Charles Barkley was hosting and he puts his hand on Dave Grohl's shoulder and Dave Grohl looks like he just freezes. And just his eyes get wider and wider. It's one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. So I don't know. That's crazy. Happy Dave Grohl Day, I guess. Weird. Well, do we last, talk about Dave Grohl a lot? Well, we we talk about a lot of other stuff. Last episode, we did talk. I did talk about Foo Fighters. Oh yeah. And uh, is the emphasis the, on the Foo or the Fighters? Foo Fighters. <laughs> foo Fighters. Um, yeah. So so I you know I, that was just the most recent diversion in in the podcastery that I thought about. Mm-hmm. So, but we can talk about Charles Barkley. I'm for it. <laughs> He's the best. Uh, are you too Kenny? <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. I love, I love Charles Barkley so much. Um, that commercial where they're picking for like three on three basketball <laughs> and then curl picks him and he's like gloating over the other kids. I still I got it. <laughs> yeah. The NBA playoffs are right now. And, uh, you know, TNT coverage is far greater than ESPN coverage because of Charles Barkley. Yeah. So, where, wherever go. Charles Barkley is, is better. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's just how it is. So, um, all right. So let's talk about the party. So as we will do the, we'll, we'll get everybody at the party and then we will break off into the side quests and then come back to the main quest of the party. How's mm-hmm, that sound? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, for uh, general impression of this episode, what'd you think? before we get too far into the things yeah i I, uh, once again i mean it's hard to say i don't like an episode it's very like so just saying that but yeah i i like this episode because again ben comes more out of his shell um you know even ann gets what finally gets a little bit of what she wants like she's connecting with ron in a way that you know um she just wanted to kind of hang out and now they share a common you know uh I don't know. I want to say hobby, but they just, they just did something together, which is kind of cool. Um, I thought the whole, like the continuation of Chris and uh, Millicent and Jerry was, is hilarious. And then we get a little, we get to learn a little bit more about Tom and this sets up a lot of stuff for the future. So overall, I, again, maybe not like, Hey, just watch parks and rec. This is the greatest episode ever, but definitely fits in with just keeping the stories going. Uh, Leslie's still trying to like, even her meet and greet is part of her campaign, even though it's not just about campaigning. So like a lot of good things come out of it. So the situations writers keep throwing at us, uh, to move the story forward. I just, I think are, are great. So what, what did you think? Uh, I, I love this episode. I think it's fun. I think the, uh, if somebody were to just like be clicking through the channels and they landed on this episode, this would be a great introduction to all the characters. They're all sure. all their characters are on full display here. Um, and everybody in the cast has something to do. Yeah. Still not enough uh, Donna, though. Right. Donna's not maximized, but she does. You do get a sense of Donna sure. in yeah. her t- small interaction with Chris. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. So this episode starts with April and Andy going over their, uh, decorations for the, the party that they're throwing at their house. That's another Halloween party. Last Halloween party we saw was at Anne's house and it was lame until Tom and Wendy showed up and then it got good. Uh, Ron dressed as a pirate. Um, and, uh, spoiler alert, he will do so again. Uh, cause that's his Halloween costume. For for all the Halloweens. Yeah, this is my costume. Um, And so this is, uh, as they're going through the different things, they're they're listing the things that they have. There's going to be vampire teeth, spider webs. Uh, You know, they, she, April asked, like, did you get the fake blood capsules? And and he's like, they didn't have any. And then like, uh, she's like, really? And looks up and like blood is coming out of his mouth. And so, uh, you know, Andy's super into this too. And then they have a, uh, they're talking to the camera and they're talking about throwing the party and, it was like someone will die and Andy's up of fun and a murder. <laughs> and then he's trying to like list all the positive things that are going to be super fun. It's like April's like bloody goblins, fake ones. It's going to be awesome. We have decorations, dead people that were just murdered, not murdered, but pictures of dead people. And so he's trying to like spin anything that's dark and twisted that April says into a thing that won't have the police come to their house. Right. And it ends with uh, with April saying blood orphans. And Andy's like, no blood orphans. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> so um, so it's going to be a great party. 
is basically the vibe that we're getting. However, uh, as the show progresses, uh, we find uh, April and Andy uh, have decorated the house. And in April is going as a sumo wrestler who's lost all the weight. And so she's got one of those inflatable sumo suits uh, that has no air in it. And so it's so funny. <laughs> it's a great costume. It's such a good idea. Um, we've been watching a lot of sumo uh, in our family because uh, every uh, NHK uh, always has the highlights. Right. And you you've watched this. And there's oh, yeah. one guy who looks like I think he's like 37 years old. Um, and so, but he looks like he used to be a lot bigger and like his, yes. his skin is just hanging off of his already still tremendous frame. Um, but there's like, there, there, there probably was more of him <laughs> is kind of <laughs> the vibe. And so when I was watching this, I was like, yeah, that's accurate. Um, so, uh, I just, so gotta say, I just gotta say, if you ever watch sumo, just prepared for the slow motion. That's, that's all I'll say. There is a lot of <laughs> slow motion replay of, and a lot of butt cheeks <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of slow motion butt cheeks too yeah i yeah it's actually like it's super interesting to watch and it's also kind of mean like i feel like these are like like gigantic people and i get it let's push each other out of the ring but the ring is elevated like it's set up for them to fall as often as possible like off of the thing i don't see off what the problem the is it's pretty amazing. <laughs> it's still awesome. It's like it, it's like it's like the first episodes of it's like the original uh what's the what's the show um where they they bounce on the they try to run across the big inflated balls and wipe the out. things wipe out. Yeah, it's like the original wipeout. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> okay. I think it's so good. It's so great. <laughs> okay, we need uh, giant people to try yes. to push each other out of the ring and and maybe fall down. Now, these sumo wrestlers are incredibly athletic. They are. Oh, they can do like the splits and stuff. They're amazing. And so like, it's not just like they're just giant people. They're like, they're like, they train so hard and they're like, they can, they're very flexible mm -hmm. and very strong. Now, you brought up Wipeout. How much better would Wipeout be? <laughs> If we had a sumo season, we, they wouldn't get past the first obstacle, man. They can, you, they, they we, don't have, we don't know. <laughs> they don't have range. They don't have the, the they can't like jump. We don't it's know. Like, we don't know. That's, that's not their training. Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, we don't know. Oh man. I just feel bad for him. I think, I think we, I, I'm going to write a letter to whoever, dear Mr. Wipeout. Uh, <laughs> your family has produced some wonderful television <laughs> all across the country. I didn't realize you had so many or the, the world. I didn't realize you had so many families in so many different countries. The Wipeout Legacy is fantastic. Two words. Sumo season. Yours. Parks and conversation. And then I'll just mail it on. No problem. Um, yeah, so <laughs> this costume is great. Uh, and Ben, uh, or Andy is going as UFC fighter Brock Lesnar is that the name? I, I think it's, that's the name. But a famous UFC fighter. I know yeah. nothing about UFC, so I think it's awesome that Ben and Chuck, uh, no, Chuck, it, Chuck Liddell. Okay, Chuck Liddell. Uh, I do think it's great though that the the couple who are throwing the party are on theme. Yeah, but they're but they're not like it's not an obvious theme, but it is like yeah, they're both fighters, combatants. And that comes in later with how because uh, this episode is full of conflict between April and Andy and mm -hmm. Ben because Ben comes in and uh, sees all the decorations. Mm -hmm. and is like, I guess we're having a party. <laughs> uh, and he's like, I knew there was one that I forgot to tell you. Uh, and we get uh, assaulted by a falling skeleton. Right. Yeah. It's not just a few decorations. It's not like if I threw a Halloween party, um, my decoration <laughs> is the bowl of candy. That's enough for me. Um, they went all out. And so uh, Ben is overwhelmed with all of this, but he's super passive aggressive about it. And so he's like, uh, yeah, it's fine. I, I'm just going to be working quietly in my room. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'll, if you need anything, I'll be awake because I can't sleep because of the enormous party. <laughs> and so like they're, they're to totally passive aggressive, which is so funny. And then his talking head is like, uh, we see that this is his family uh, way. Cause he's like, my family is very non-confrontational. 
uh, my parents' method of problem solving is to kind of keep everything bottled up and just subtly hint at what's bothering them. And after 36 years, they're still divorced. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that's where this re- this conversation, this whole track is going to go. Um, and then come to the party. Uh, Chris shows up and he's dressed as Sherlock Holmes and he sees Donna and then he starts putting together the the clues uh, about her costume. Blue shirt, blue badge, nice stick. You're a policewoman. And Donna's like, yep, you're a regular. And Chris cuts her off. Sherlock Holmes. Um because he is trying to solve all the mysteries. And here he's like, I solved that mystery before you did, which is not a mystery, Chris. Not a mystery. Uh, but Andy, uh, Donna's response is just like, yeah, this was fun. <laughs> and just walks which is, away. The, which is the appropriate response at that yeah. point. Yeah. So in in the world of Parks and Rec, we have two uh, two very extreme characters that you have to just learn how to disengage with. One is Oren. And the other is Chris <laughs> and Donna has mastered the disengage with Chris. Just walk away. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And so, yeah, you're right. Chuck Liddell. Uh, and so Don, Chris sees Andy, you're Chuck Liddell. Uh, and then he, like, as he sees another girl walk by girl from the ring. And then he talks about how much he loves Sherlock Holmes. And now, now and combine all of those characteristics with, you know, great physical fitness. You have Sherlock Traeger. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, Chris is the worst. Uh, and then Jerry comes and he's in a big brown bag with a face on it. <laughs> and Chris says, Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> um, and Jerry's like, where's uh, where's Millie? So Chris was like, I just didn't want to make it weird if we you saw us together at this party. And Jerry's like, no, don't worry about it. And so Chris starts texting her, but never breaking eye contact <laughs> with Jerry, which is one of the creepiest things. Um, and so uh, invites Millie over and Jerry is just amazed that Chris is able to text without breaking eye contact. And he's like, it's rude to break eye contact. And then Jerry gets a text and Chris is like, that's from me. <laughs> and they so. high five. And he, they're so excited. Like that was peak Chris Traeger at that moment. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, and then we uh, see Ron shows up and uh, Andy's like, hey, didn't you wear that pirate costume last year? He's like, yes, this is my Halloween costume. Uh, and then Ron is like, did you know that you, your bathroom faucet is leaking? And <laughs> Andy uh, is like, I stuffed a socket it yesterday. What else do they want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> they... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I know. I just when I I heard that the they want me to do for the first time watching this this time, and I was like, that is so wonderful. <laughs> what do they want me to do? So uh, that's the world. It's the world against me. Like they, anything that goes wrong, it's like, uh, why did they do this? Well, I wonder though if he thinks it's like the water company. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, what do they want me to do? Or if it's like big pipe, big, uh, big bathroom, <laughs> big bathroom. Yeah. And then he also points out that they have an exposed wire above the bathtub as well. <laughs> and, and he's like, "Oh yeah, shock wire. I call it that because if you take a shower and you touch it, you die." <laughs> and, and he's like, looks right at the camera, and Ron's just like, "That is accurate." <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you go, you went to the mills, uh, in Uruguay, right? Yes. Did you stay at their apartment? Yes. Uh, the one with the, the second, the third shower with an exposed wire above it. Uh, I don't, I don't remember. There's something with, there's a roof bathroom. Okay. That's a different place. Um, yeah. So the place, the first place that they stayed at, that they lived in that I went to visit them, uh, they had a bathroom. Uh, with an exposed wire above the shower, <laughs> like and so Michael was just like, "You you need to be very careful in there." <laughs> I'm like, dude, I am six three, and yeah. this was a bathroom that was built for you know short people. Like it was people, not built people for not six three. Yeah, it was not built for big American people, and uh, and so like every day of that trip, I took a shower, like basically crouching down the whole time, <laughs> just so I did not come anywhere close to electrocuting myself in, with that exposed wire. So Su- super sumo, fun. S- sumo stance shower. Yeah. So it was not great. They also had a bidet and I was tempted. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know how this works. It was a totally separate thing. But every time I saw it, I was like, I got to figure this out. But also... 
I don't want to make a mess. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this. So not I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> not that kind of mess anyway. No, no. So someone's got to show you how to do it. Can I get a tutorial? <laughs> well, I don't want to Google it. Is there how to use it a day? <laughs> <laughs> I want to look that up. I don't want I don't want the internet and like the FBI to be like, oh, one of those weirdos. So no thanks. What, what about what about uh Ken Watanabe, the the reenactment of like, you know, the when he did the curse? What if there was like a, a bidet video like that, right? Uh yeah, that is probably a thing that exists and I still don't want to see it. <laughs> and then the ghosts come out of the hose. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what cleans your butt wow i didn't realize it was full of uh water ghosts. native american uh, no, mysticism no, just, so just water ghosts oh <laughs> uh, snap mom's a water ghost um yeah so uh so yeah andy is like or ron asked for a toolbox and he's like yeah uh <laughs> it's uh <laughs> and um ron that does a talking head in the bathroom with andy and uh, April's toolbox. And he's like, no home is complete without a proper toolbox. Here's April and Andy's a hammer, half a pretzel, <laughs> baseball card, some cartridge that says Sonic and Hedgehog, a scissor half, and a flashlight filled with jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> the flashlight, and then he pours it out, and yes. the jelly beans go everywhere. But my favorite, for some reason, was the scissor half. Right, a scissor of- half. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess you could open boxes with it or something. I don't know. Like cut, the, cut, the, cut the tape. But it was also just in like a Safeway bag. Right. <laughs> the whole thing was just in a Safeway bag. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's pretty amazing. Oh, and, and speaking about bags, too, um, at the very beginning when they were showing all of their the, the stuff that they got for the party, it was in a food and stuff bag, which I wanted to point out at the very beginning, just because yeah. they just keep expanding the universe and saying, hey, this exists. Yeah, it's a good place to get all of your food and most of your stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the uh, so Ron is going. His plot now is a his side quest in this party is to uh, fix all the things that are wrong with April and Andy's house. Um, and so he uh, goes to Lowe's and <laughs> in his pirate costume still. Yeah. And a, the, one of the workers comes and says, is there a project you're working on? And Ron just looks, says, I know more than you. <laughs> one of my favorite Ron Swanson lines of all time. <laughs> it is. And the guy's like, yeah, okay so good. then. And just walks off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I go to Lowe's pretty regularly and there are times I don't know much. I'm not, I'm not super handy, but a simple Google search for something will tell you almost, almost anything you need to know. Mm-hmm. And so when I go, I go into Lowe's and I ask, like, I am looking for this specific thing because Dr. Internet told me this is what I need. And I, it's amazing how many times the people in that section are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, <laughs> how do you not know what this is? Like, I, yet, I don't even work here and I know what right, I'm looking and yet, for. And yet some guy, somehow the guy over in lighting knows exactly what aisle and shelf the thing you need in plumbing is like the exact right. thing. Right. Yeah. It just doesn't make yeah. sense. Well, the nice thing is that if you if you download the apps now and you find the thing that you want in the app, it'll show it'll tell you that the aisle and the bay what? of where the item is. Yep. It's pretty cool. Now, you That's have the talk Lowe's bay. app? Uh, I believe Lowe's and Home Depot has it. I know wow. Home Depot does for sure. So there you go, listener. You, you never have to talk to anybody again. There's a Home Depot coming close to my neighborhood. Oh, man. I'm pretty excited about it. So I can you know, comparison shop and really waste a whole day before doing anything. <laughs> there you go. So, and you got to, if you get a good deal on lumber, you got to get the, the best sh- price, but you have to buy it that hour. Cause it's going up. Oh yeah. So, every minute. Yeah. It's craziness. The, uh, yeah, I didn't know that about the app. I will definitely have to get that because I, I, I was, I, I'm replacing toilets. I did one and I have the other one to replace and I just don't want to do it. Um, I bought it. <laughs> I'm ready to do it. Don't want to. Um, so I went into the Lowe's asking for a part. And I walked all over the place in the plumbing section. <laughs> and this was one of the rare times where you fill in lighting, like talking to plumbing person. I'm like, I'm looking for this. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And like you said, like guy in lighting knows. And they're like, hey, Phil, Phil, <laughs> this guy's looking for a, 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 a toilet flange or whatever it was. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he walks right to it. Boom. There it is. Like I was looking at that. Like, how, <laughs> how did I not see it? I was looking at that th- very thing. How did I not see it? So 
one of the challenges that I have is it feels like Lowe's wants to put everything on the bottom shelf. Like anything that you actually need. Yeah, everything I actually need is just on the bottom shelf. And it's like, you need to put that at eye level so that like people can see it so they don't bother you. No, they want you to they want you to walk around lots and lots. Oh man. Yeah, it's super annoying. So, um, yeah, so Ron goes and he's like, hey, I didn't get Andy Pearl and Andy anything for a wedding present because wedding presents are nothing more than kindling on a divorce bonfire. <laughs> uh, so he's like, I'm going to fix everything uh, and help make their home good. And so he comes back to the party and he uh, goes out and looks for Andy. He's like, you beanbag, come with me. And she's like, I'm an eggplant. I don't care. Um, I need small hands. And so Anne goes and uh, follows Ron to uh, start fixing stuff in the house. Uh, and uh, next time we see them, uh, Anne is uh, working under the sink in the bathroom and they fixed the faucet, the leaky faucet. And uh, she, she was like, this is great. Uh, hey, I'm a homeowner. Can you actually teach me what we're doing? And uh, so Ron walks her through all the different elements of replacing this thing. And he's like, man, it feels good to make something work, a sense of accomplishment and pride. And then he just stares off into the distance <laughs> for an awkward amount of time. And and he's like, are you all right? <laughs> he's great. He just he just loves it so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so he's like, I'm going to go around this house and fix everything that needs fixing. Uh, mm-hmm. And so and helps him. And so uh, their, their next project is fixing the exposed wire. Uh, what, so, I, what, what I love about this, too, is the fact that like, in what situation is this appropriate? Like, like if I just came over to your house, oh, OK, maybe. But if I came over to your house with a, a toolbox and just started like walking around fixing things, I'm sure you probably wouldn't have a problem with that. But like in general, most people would be like, why you came over for a party? Wh- why are you fixing things? Yeah, well, I do think, though, (laughs) some people don't know how to not. They don't know how to just let a broken thing be broken. Oh, yeah, that's my father in law. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, Bill would be like, well, we can fix this real quick. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Bill, this is this. We're having Easter. We're having Easter dinner. It's fine. Yeah, it's like we are here to uh, celebrate your birthday. <laughs> it's like, well, but I, you know, I, I think I just got an idea. I just let me just do it real quick. It's like, okay, it's Bill. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Uh, yeah, he's I I love Bill. He's so fun. Um, I'm not mar- I'm not married to his daughter or related to him in any way. I just think he's a really fun dude. So yeah, no, he's he's great. But yeah, there are some people that just they got to do. And Ron is it's like. Like, what's he going to do at a party? He's right. He's 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 going to hate every second of it. So now he's got a purpose at a party. Right. You know, well, so. Ron has already displayed that, you know, after going out and, um, you know, celebrating with the boys out on the town, like even if he's drunk, he's going to go home and make a chair. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I made I made this harp. That's yeah, the harp. That's what it was. And so that like he he doesn't relax is basically the vibe from Ron. So, and like with your father-in-law, like, I don't think he'd be able to sit down and read those cowboy novels knowing that there is a leaky faucet in the house. Oh, no. no and no, no. so just getting it done. And then he's like, man, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day reading this Louis L'Amour book uh, that I've already read four times, but uh, it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> so learn something new every time. Yeah. Did you know? Uh, uh, no, Bill, I didn't. Um, so next time we see Ron, he comes out to the party and he's like, excuse us, we're going to turn the power off. Um, and and let, Anne is with him. He's like, we got to switch up the main fuse hose. <laughs> and Ron's like, it's just a, just fuse. a fuse. Just a fuse, people. Um, and so they turn the power off and everybody like, woo, because it's a party. Um, and so, yeah. So then... Uh, Chris, Chris and Millicent, though, when the lights come back on, they're making out and Jerry's sitting right there. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, what is what is happening? Yeah. So much of the Chris Millicent stuff is not actually doesn't have lines. No, it's just Jerry sees it and like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah like so earlier, like earlier, he saw him dancing. 
right. which made him really, really sad, like sad. And April takes his Mr. Potato Head mouth and turns it upside down into a frown, which was just right. Perfect. No, you know, no line gag. It was great. Yeah. So good. Uh, so then uh, Ron and a- Ann are um, <laughs> working on something. I can't remember what it was. I wrote, I didn't write down what they're working on uh, when I watched it, uh, but it's under like the, a, another it's, under the sink. Under the sink again. Mm-hmm. Looks like you got a good handle on that torque wrench. Like, well, yeah, the flange was a little warped. So I just goosed it with a triple three bolt smack. And I was like, that's nonsense. <laughs> but it sounds fun to talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ron's like, you know what? You keep this toolbox that I bought for Andy and April because you worked for it. You earned it. Yeah. Um, and which is great. It's a great yeah. like gift from last time those two ca- characters interacted. Ron really didn't want anything to do with Anne. Um, to now it's like, hey, we work together you take this you you learn some things uh you know you express interest in the things ron is interested in exactly yeah and so yeah good little bonding moment there and that is their whole track right yeah yep and so then the uh yeah the jerry and chris and ben or chris and millicent track is um throughout the party chris and millicent are very very into each other uh and jerry just keeps seeing it and we kind of talked about like the lights come on and they're making out the upside down frown all of those different things like it is uh it's really quite good but at the end of the episode uh this is where we finally get to some lines chris and and millicent and jerry are leaving um and chris is like i had a great time and in the case of the woman who stole in my heart, the culprit was Millicent Gergich. Uh, and Mil- <laughs> Millicent's like, you should really be a detective. <laughs> I'd look into it. And I will look into it. And, uh, <laughs> and then he tells Jerry, like, I'm, we're going, I'm going to take your daughter home and we may have intercourse. <laughs> and Jerry's like, you got to stop saying things like that to me. Uh, and he walks you away. Got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they're leaving and Chris can't find his keys and cut back into the house at some point, April threw Chris's keys away. <laughs> it's like, solve this mystery genius. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, April, the thwarter of, uh, Chris's cool. Um, yeah, she's one of the few people who can constantly keep Chris on the, on the like lower Chris in some way through her, uh, subversion, you know? So anyway, uh, then the, as the party is going on, Ben and uh, Chris and April continue to uh, have problems. Uh, they do. Ben is super annoyed with all of the party that's happening, um, and uh, but he does come out and um, uh, to print something. That's what he's doing. He comes out to to print something. And they're like, oh, hey, look who's coming to the party. And uh, and he's like, uh, you're not wearing a costume. And April's like, he's going as lame. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Andy is like, no, you put on the Batman costume. It's so good. And uh, Ben's like, I'm not going to do that because I'm not attending this party. That's at my house. <laughs> oh, so petty. Yeah. And then they're like, if you're mad, you should just talk about it. And he's like, I'm not mad. Really? And so he's <laughs> ig- ignoring his feelings. He's masking his feelings. Um, and uh, Andy then takes his fingers and tries to like make him talk about it, like by <laughs> min- like pushing his lips together. <laughs> it's like your <laughs> uh, your lips. Are you-? Andy's like, your fingers are salty. <laughs> and Ben says, your, soft- your lips are soft. Um, so, um, and then he's like, I'm just going to go finish my work. And then he sees Oren going into his room and he's like, no, no, stay out. (laughs) So, which uh, right call Oren should never be allowed in anyone's room ever. Um, and then I cut back again and Ben is out in the kitchen and he's got a beer and, uh, and April's like, I thought you weren't coming to this party. And he's like, I just want a Butterfinger. And she's like, slaps out of his hands. Like, you can't have a party because you, you can't have any can because you're not part of the party. And then we learn about April's family's uh, handling of sibling uh, disagreements. Like, I have one sister. We steal each other's stuff, hack each other's Twitter accounts, set each other's clothes on fire. There are no rules. <laughs> And I love how when she's she, when she's like telling him he can't have the candy, she's like actively like sumoing him. Yeah, like she's she's backing him up like a sumo, like bumping <laughs> yeah. into him a little bit. <laughs> she's so great, so intimidating. And then Ben 
and Andy uh, are talking and is like, Andy comes in, is like, we need to talk about what's bothering you. And, he, and Ben's like, oh, please come into my room. <laughs> and Sally's like, you're angry at me, but you're not talking about it. And I'm going to beat you up until you do, because I'm mature. <laughs> and then Andy tells us about his family. It's like, I grew up with five brothers and we fought using the Dwyer method, which was yelling, wrestling, crying, followed by lots of hugs and then more wrestling, but the fun kind and then crying when the fun kind of wrestling got out of hand. <laughs> and so for and this, and this whole time, this talking head, and then it, then it pulled the camera pulls out and he's got Ben in a headlock. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so he's like, at one point when uh, Ron comes out to tell everybody they're turning the power off, he's like, make sure to keep pressure on the cranium. <laughs> and it's like, okay, on the cranium. Got it. Um, and, uh, and so Ron is, um, yeah. So he, uh, Andy's got Ben in a headlock. He's like he's putting the chip bowl on as they're sitting on the couch, putting the chip bowl on Ben's like back. Basically, he's like, I need more chips. It gets up and they start walking. And Ben's like dragging his feet like a three-year-old throwing a, a, a tantrum. Uh, like not helping move at all. And he's like, come on, walk. He's like, no, this is a pacifist protest. <laughs> Have you had enough? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so he, uh, so then they start wrestling on the ground and, um, Ben is like, I doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And he's like trying to fight and get his way out. But he, he accidentally elbows Andy in the nose. Uh, and then he's like, uh, he gets up and he feels terrible. And then he's like, Oh, Oh, you hurt me. And like looks up, moves his hands away from his face. And there's like blood coming out of his mouth. And he's like, oh, my God, oh, what happened? And uh, and he's like, psych, blood capsules. And, uh, and I just wanted to express it, uh, shock you into expressing your anger. And and, and that and, you know, and and, and my nose is broken. <laughs> so then I gotta go to they, the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's like, didn't it feel good to get your feelings out? Um, and so they uh, they go <laughs> to the hospital uh, and cut to the hospital and Ben's like, does that hurt? He's like, yeah, you broke my nose. <laughs> so, um, and Ben's like, I'm sorry, it, but any, I just like, I don't care. Just get it all out there. And so Ben starts saying like, look how you and April live in the house that affects me. Um, so, uh, stop just, you got to tell me about stuff that's happening and stop referring to my bedroom as a common space. Stop using my comforter for your pillow forts. <laughs> um, and so it, Ben's like, yeah, sure. Or Andy's like, yeah, sure. But, uh, I asked one thing in return. I need you to give me $5,600 for studio money to record <laughs> our new album. <laughs> it's like, that's not going to happen. Um, and so April comes and is like, we got to hurry. I'm, I'm blocking in front. I'm, I'm blocking an ambulance. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so the April and it's like everything cool. And he's like, yeah, it's cool. We just can't use Ben's comforters anymore for a pillow fart pillow forts and he was like but what are we gonna have sex on <laughs> so yeah ben's life with living with them is terrible um, it's, it's great for both of them sure sure <laughs> it is uh, because because he's got to he's got to relax and they've got to learn to grow up it's perfect yeah that's one way to look at it so then <laughs> the uh the a plot is with tom and leslie and tom is it starts out with tom coaching Leslie on how to, uh, you know, present herself at this small businessman's business person's gathering, uh, in, uh, that, that E 720 is going to throw. And he's like, you got to only talk about Leslie. If you're talking about anything else, you're, you're not, you're doing it wrong. So keep talking about you. Uh, like I do, cause everybody loves me. Cause I talk about myself constantly. I really am amazing. <laughs> and, um, and so Leslie's like, uh, you know, one of the things that you have to uh, talking heads, like, you you have to show that you're not anti-business. You have to like be a part of the business community. So Tom's helping me. Um, and, uh, and she's like, here's my opening line. Hi, I'm Leslie Nope. And I'm in the business of being city councilor. And before she even oh finishes my. it, Tom's in the back. is like, Oh my God. And he's like, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> and so Tom then gives her some Intel on Martin Kernston, who is the president of the chamber of commerce and also the owner of, uh, Kernston rubber nipples and he's the nipple king um and uh you're looking at him like his haircut's terrible um and uh and Tom and she's like I know who he is I know about him and Tom's like well which of his advisors does he trust more Ted Flirtman or Rex Spax and Leslie tries to answer like well it depends Flirtman was more of a confidant and Ron Tom's like I totally just made those up <laughs> so uh you got to do this research you got to do this eat intel and then Ron gets a call or Tom gets a call from John Ralphio. And he's like, John Ralphio, 
Stop calling. Stop <laughs> crying. <laughs> what? Hold on. Slow down. Hold on. And uh, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I just love that Tom kind of like out Leslie Leslie with his binder. Like he, he actually did the, the research. He did the work, you know? So like when Tom is on his own, when he's doing his thing, like he is really good when he's not trying to, you know, spend money and be, be a baller, you know? So I just, I thought it was kind of cool too. Cause like he had all of the information he is, he, they're showing that he can be good at what he does. He just hasn't found his niche yet. Yeah. But also he w- he wants Kernston to work with him. That's true. Yeah, that's a good like point. He's, he's motivated, uh, as we see in the way he interacts with Kernston uh, later. Like he's motivated because he we come to find out E seven twenty is broke <laughs> because uh, they spent all their money. <laughs> so, um, so he's trying to like throw this party for Leslie for himself uh, and to try to save the the company. And so. Uh, when they show up at the party, Leslie is ups- clearly upset because everything is E720 everywhere. And Tom's face is everywhere. Um, and Leslie, like, this is E720 running for office. And Tom's like, it's a small business. You're trying to show people you have a good relationship with small businesses. Uh, now, this party is about you. But, you know, like, this is, you know, a business engagement. And then Leslie's like, shouldn't my face be on these rugs? And Tom's like, no. It's always been a dream of mine to be a rug <laughs> and it's finally happened. Um, so you can yes. get rugs made of pretty much any graphic now, if you want. Yeah. And, th- you and, can. Th- and throw a blanket. Yeah. Just, I'm just saying, uh, I'm sorry. I really needed to, you kind of cut out a bit. Oh, there. I, I, I said th- a blanket, throw a blanket. You can also. Yeah. Rugs, throw blankets. Uh, uh those fat head stickers. Yes. Those would be great. Um, yeah, I love that stuff. So uh, so then cut to the back to the uh, business party here. And uh, Leslie is like, he's talking with some of the business owners. And, um, you know, she's like, I'll, although I've never worked with you professionally as a private citizen, I've personally patronized each and every one of your establishments. And then Tanya says, I've never seen you at Sue Salads. <laughs> and I was like, that's because I don't hate myself, Tanya. Sorry. <laughs> I know I should be chasing your vote, but I stand behind my decision to avoid salad and other disgusting things. And I think I have a lot of support in the community for that. And as she's saying that, like all the people in this little group are like, yeah, we agree. (laughs) So she's making some good points. Um, So uh, her talking has like, you know, even though it's all Tom, I think this is going pretty good. Um, And, um, and then she meets Mr. Kernston and, uh, you know, they're talking and he's like, you did the Harvest Festival. It's like, well, it's a team effort. And she's trying to like divert attention because she's been trained to not like highlight her herself because she is a part of a bureaucracy, a part of the the government. So she's not about bragging for herself. Um, but then Tom comes over is like, uh, you know, Leslie did a great job. And really, it was probably the starting point of what launched entertainment 720 uh and it was like no one said that i just said it <laughs> so um so then he starts talking to kernston about trying to build some business partnerships uh with kernston's rubber nipples um and he takes martin away to give him the tails <laughs> so because tom is an innovator and instead of saying the deets he says the tails um yeah so uh yeah leslie is upset because he's uh being a, a butthead and uh yeah so then she confronts him like hey you stole the nipple king thanks a lot traitor um and so then he's like no it's all good uh what if i introduce you for your speech and uh leslie why don't you just not help me anymore i don't need your help so leslie um after you know cuts cuts back to leslie at the this giving her speech and saying you know we've all suffered through this economy um and what kept our town alive is a small businessman and you know, like points out to a small shorter person like i'm not talking about you gary you are a giant in this community um and so uh li- listing all of the dis- different businesses um which is fantastic all these companies <laughs> these names we've got food and stuff jj's diner glenmore discount cemetery <laughs> Uh, tramp stamp tattoos, <laughs> enormous Kenny's fried dough stand, and mobile phone emporium. <laughs> Sue Sellers, she just mutters it. Uh, smooth operator bikini wax, Jeff's saving and loan. 
<laughs> and I love, I, I love, I know, um, the tramp stamp tattoos is just like this old couple. Like right. Not- <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Kenny's fried dough stand and mobile phone emporium yeah. makes me laugh so hard because um, we've been to Roatan Honduras and like Roatan is a bunch of businesses that have multiple things going on. Oh, for and sure. there's a place that like you can rent videos, you can get ice cream and you can get a, a cell phone SIM card for when you're on the island. <laughs> right. It's like, wow, this is amazing. Um, so, yeah, Kenny's fried dough stand and mobile phone emporium. Uh, and then Tom takes over with the E720 uh, promotion um, and trying to lift his company up and uh, has a brief promotional film about E720. Um, and in it, it says Entertainment 720 has been a fixture of this community since June. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, uh, Leslie's like, you got to stop this. What are you doing? Like, this is not cool. Um, cut it short. And uh, and they're like arm wrestling or not. He, she's like wrestling with him on the the platform um and uh she's like you're lucky that martin kernston is here because you're gonna need another nipple and she gives a like, titty twister and uh yeah pretty great pretty great um and then uh cut back to the video and there's a person whose face is all blocked out and uh, it's clearly tom using a voice modulator trying to be uh mark zuckerberg <laughs> in, in quotes it says mark <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's like uh let's face it booking e720 was the smartest decision i ever made i hope you liked this story i invented facebook <laughs> <laughs> uh and then he uh let's see, like wow that was really uh ridiculous um and then uh let's like we're not gonna waste any more time and tom's like, agreed let's get to it so please welcome the e720 mailing list divas and like a bunch of uh women come out asking for people to get on the mailing list and he's like now come join me and take a dip in the e720 mobile hot tub it's parked right outside lego <laughs> um yeah so the party is not going well uh and leslie as the party's ending goes up to uh kernston is like look I want to apologize uh, for the actions of that little weasel. Uh, and Kirsten's like, look, I'm frugal. I don't do extravagance. That's why I cut my own hair. Uh, and <laughs> it's what's made me a successful businessman. And if E720 is a kind of business you trust, I'm afraid we don't have the same values. Um, and so Leslie's whole goal of getting the Kirsten endorsement is squashed because of Tom's foolishness. And so the, she goes outside to find him in the, um, in the hot tub. And it's like, get out of there or we're never going to be friends again. He's like, I'm not getting out. So she's like, well, then I'm getting in. And then she like dunks him. Like, I don't want to look at you. Pulls his head up. I, I'm so mad. And dunks him again. And like over and over again. Um, I don't want to see your face. I've been looking at your what face all you? night. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Leslie is processing her own emotions. Right. Uh, in all of this. Um, and then cuts to a commercial at that point. And then they come back and they're both sitting in there. And, uh, and Leslie's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and Tom's like, my company's bankrupt. Okay. E720 is dead. Oh man. So, um, uh, yeah, so they're really, uh, bummed and it's, it's sad. And, uh, so, um, she's like, so what happened? I, I, I'm all pruny. I'm it's like, wait, where are we at? I maybe we should go to too far. Yeah. Maybe you should get out. I was like, I, I, I'm too sad to get out. And, like, and I'm all pruny. What happened? I don't know. I guess I didn't moisturize enough. It's like, no, the company, Tom, what happened with the company? Um, and like we're hemorrhaging cash since we opened. They say you got to spend money to make money. I don't know where we went wrong. We spent all our money. <laughs> so earlier, uh, you know, somebody told Ben that you need to make, you know, you have clients to make money uh, or t- Ben told uh, Tom, you need to have clients to make money. And <laughs> Tom's like, great. And, and Ben's like, am I the first one to tell you that? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, know where Tom is getting for all of his, like, you know, uh, business quote savvy or research that he does. Like he doesn't know anything about business. No, is, like, he should know just a little bit about business. Like spending all your money is a bad idea. Yeah. And you know, er, when we first met Tom, he was, the small business liaison right for the park and for the parks department. And so like he knows all these people. So nowhere along the way in these conversations with these small business people, did he pick anything up? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's just all ridiculous. Um, and so they go and get some comfort food. Uh, and then, and, and let's like, I thought you were doing great. And it's like, yeah, I tried to book you and you said you were booked up. He's like, that's, 
you know, for the first two weeks, we told everybody we were book solid to make people want us more. <laughs> that was the stupidest idea I've ever heard. It's like, well, hindsight is 2020. And unless it's like, well, regular sites that have got that one. <laughs> also, your logo is the worst logo I've ever seen. It doesn't yes. make any sense. Um, yeah. So Leslie's just giving it all to Tom. Like all the, all the truth is happening. Um, and, uh, and yet, and, and yet Tom is at a place like you can tell, like he's at a place where he can kind of, he's at a place of acceptance right now. And so I just feel like Leslie, even though she's pointing all these things out, like they're just kind of getting it all out there. Kind of like, I don't know, like, like what Ben needed to do. So they're getting all of this stuff out so that he can move on. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, let Tom feels bad as they're eating and he's like, I feel terrible. I made a really great video biography for you. Uh, it's back at the office. And so then like, well, let's eat and let's go watch it. So when it cuts back to the office, um, the Tom is narrating this video about Leslie's life and it's really great and how wonderful it is. And Tom, uh, cuts to like Leslie giving a talking head and Tom Haverford is a selfish, unctuous, sleazy, self-promoting, good-hearted, secretly kind and wonderful, tiny little person. Uh, and he went to Kernston later and basically begged him to meet with uh, Leslie again. And as he's doing this, like he may have bribed him, he like holds up like a, a case of hair clipping supplies, yeah. uh, like a, uh, clippers <laughs> and like all the different, uh, different gates and all that stuff. Um, and, uh, and so I was like, look, he may have failed, but he won't be down for long. Um, and the video cuts ends with her name is Leslie Nope and I'm going to vote for her. And if Lil Sebastian were still alive, <laughs> he'd surely vote for her too. Um, and I reckon you should too. And Tom's like, did you like it? Unless he's just crying, ugly crying. I'm going to watch it every day for the rest of my life. And when I die, I'm going to project it on my tombstone. <laughs> so, so they made uh, it right. <laughs> I, I, I love Tom's, uh, Tom's um, documentary voice, like his voiceover. Like yeah. it's this bad, like Southern-ish kind of uh ken burns narrator voice it's right yeah <laughs> there is a lot of ken burns effect in happening <laughs> yes which are like they keep zoom in on a photo zoom out uh yeah he's uh yeah his narrator voice is really great and you know his video editing skills not bad no yeah, not bad the content that he puts in many of his videos terrible <laughs> but editing not bad <laughs> not bad so yeah but i like this one like this is not a super high rated uh episode on imdb it's a 7.8 out of 10 but wow uh we have a a good amount of emotional journey that people go on Mm -hmm. you know tom is going like coming to a place of, of dealing with failure ben is coming to a place where he will express what's actually bothering him and not be passive aggressive uh leslie um is able to communicate a truth to her friend and like that's important like your business is terrible <laughs> and that's a truth you need to know right. um you know so there's some good emotional journey that they're going on on in this episode um yeah so yeah it was a really a relational episode like all these relationships like move forward in some capacity or we learn uh, the people grew because of because of the relationships with each other mm-hmm. yeah I don't know, um, some some episodes like things happen, right? Like like something happens, they react, and we move on, right? But this one, it was everybody kind of had to change in some capacity. Like even like like I said, like Ron and and uh, Anne's relationship moved forward, and he she came up in his eyes a little bit, and she didn't feel and she he empowered her a little bit, like he taught her some stuff, but then rewarded her, and and she's like, oh wow, he's he's not that bad of a guy either, you know. So there's just a lot of that going on, and um. Plus, April got to throw away Chris's keys, which is great. Yeah, that's always a win when you get to throw away Chris's keys. Wow, 7.8. That just seems really low for this. This seems very like Parks and Rec, like very core to what the show is, in my opinion. Like these are the episodes that made Parks and Rec so great outside of the ones that were just like these mega awesome episodes. Like this is these are the kind of the glue episodes that I don't know. This shouldn't be a 7.8. You know what, Jeremy? I agree. (sighs) So I'm writing a letter to Wipeout, Mr. Wipeout, and then to Imbd, Imdb, and his family. (laughs) Mr. DB, please call me Dr. (laughs) DB. Um, But, you know, 
I can't, uh, I can't believe you're DB Cooper. I don't know why. It's that, it's really oh, funny. Hey, oh man, Jeremy, know, we're know, still recording this. I, I know, I know, but nobody knows what that means. So, <laughs> you listener, that's Cross- a spoiler for something. <laughs> Crossover that, episode. <laughs> that's a spoiler for something that you have no idea what it is, <laughs> but yeah. you'll know when you see it. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's what Jeremy was talking about. Um, here's a uh, two of the user reviews. The one one is ten out of ten. Tom makes this ep yet again. Tom in this ep alone made me give it a ten. Hilarious. The Facebook mark is dark shadow. Lol lol. So that's one level. <laughs> All right. Uh, the the next one uh, is five out of ten. Leslie is still a problem. <laughs> she has to be the worst character on this show. She only thinks of herself and never cares for anyone else. She calls Tom an annoying person when that's what everyone thinks of her. On top of that, she tries to ruin Tom's moment with the businesses, and she's totally senseless and too eager for attention. Hope she leaves this show or something. Watching this show is unwatchable with her. I think, I think, what? Tom, Haverford, I think Tom Haverford wrote that. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know what was going on with this person when they wrote this review. So I hope, wow. I hope they know. Like, I, I hope that's a joke. Like, I hope it's because Leslie is the show. <laughs> So, yeah, and that was her thing. That was she set up the meet and greet. She hired Tom and he did not deliver on what he was supposed to do. So she had every right to be annoyed. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Wow. So so regardless, what what we what I'm looking at here with these two reviews that are highlighted, uh, three out of 98 found this review helpful. Uh, That's four good. out of 13 found the other one helpful. Um, three out of 98 found this helpful. So uh, 95 people deliberately said not helpful <laughs> so um but there's a lot of people i feel dumber for having read it yeah there's a lot of people who don't know what the show's about <laughs> who are re- allowed to review things come on guys <laughs> so anyway uh next next week's episode uh party for the end of the world it's yes. gonna be fantastic hail zorb hail zorb um and so listener get your, please get your flutes ready yeah, get your flutes ready. Uh, you know, prepare for your face to be melted off. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, there's a lot of good uh, productivity tips in that guy's book. So, um, yeah. So please uh, be sure to join us. Let if you have questions or comments on this show or any of our previous episodes, please send us an email: parksandconversation at gmail dot com. You can also like and uh, rate and subscribe in your podcatcher things. Leaving reviews is helpful. This is what they tell me. Um, and so, yeah, so thank you for listening and, uh, please continue doing that. Um, yeah, that's it. Right, Jeremy, anything else we need to No, I think, I I think we covered everything. Fantastic. All right. Well then I will talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Bye.